Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I am going to explain you about the variables in the Power Automate. So let's create our new Power Automate Cloud Flows. So I am taking here I instant Cloud Flows. I am skipping the flow name. Okay. I will use the old designer. I will select the trigger manually. Okay. Now add action. So we need to type a variable so in the variable sections we have basically five types of action is available like first is like basically initialize and then uh, we can set variable we can increment the command append to a string append to array okay so let's create a variable and then here we need to type a variable name so i'm going to type a where okay so first is like a where boolean is available in the type okay and then data type and then we have integer float string object and array okay so if i type a boolean if i type any string okay and if i try to save this then uh, it will give me error because it's a boolean type okay so either we can type a, a true or false okay <clears throat> so if i type a slow true then you can see here we have a true value okay and same way we can type here false okay then uh, we have another type is available integer okay so integer expect only the numbers not a string okay if i click on save button then again it will give me error because uh, it is taking as a string okay so if i we need to enter a number only in this section in the value so now it will saved okay and in the same way we have a float okay and then string and then object and then array okay so let's take an example of uh, right now for this uh, integer variable only okay and then we will add uh, another action which is called uh, let's say uh, increment and decrement okay so first we will increment this and then uh, so in the increment variable you will get only the uh, uh numeric variable okay so where is the one okay if i change this to a float okay that time also it will increment but that time it it is ask me to like a increment number okay and then now if i run this then you will see first we initialize that variable as a one and then uh we increment this to a two so you can see this is a type okay and variable name value is one and that time we increment this value by two okay so and the value will become a three okay so that's how we can use the increment variable and same way we have a decrement also we need to select the variable name and then right now we are just decrement by only one if i run this then now where variable value will be two because we initialize by one then an increment by two and uh, decrement uh, that pair variable by one so i am directly open this so now you can see okay so that is the use of the increment and decrement variable actions so basically we use this when we perform such actions where we need to in Increase the variable name so that time it is uh, it will be very useful okay <clears throat> now we will add another <coughs> action so we cover the increment decrement and then initialize now we check the set variable so in the set variable uh, again we can select the uh, variable from the drop down and now i am setting that variable value as a five okay so that action also we use when somewhere like uh, uh, let's suppose if we are using any kind of let's say a do while loop okay 
then uh, we are performing some action and uh, we need to uh, run that do by loop let's suppose and we don't know the when our condition will be met so that time we will use that kind of uh, variable and then we can use the set variable to make the condition whenever um, uh, whenever our um, um, uh, let's say per certain actions we are performing in the inside the do while loop so and when then uh, action is performed and we made the criteria that time we use this kind of things okay so now you can see where variable is now five okay now if i add again and uh, if i type here variable okay so now set initialize decrement increment that is all done now we will use the append to string variable so if i select the drop down then you won't be able to see any kind of variable because we initialize the variable as a float or integer not an as a string okay so append to string variable only take the variable uh, when you initialize uh, uh, using the type of a string not any other type so that time you guys able to see okay uh, let me delete this otherwise it will give me an error when i will define the string type okay okay so i will select now string so now you can see that it is coming and now if i type hi if i run this <coughs> then now you can see we have a uh, high is there okay append to string variable and then uh, variable is one okay if i s if i use compose to showcase you the uh, exact uh, value of that variable and if i run this then you can see it is basically appending not a overriding okay so just to showcase you i use a compose okay because we initialize that variable as a one and then we append uh, uh, append in in a high value okay so it is just concatenate not uh, overriding okay so this is the use of append to string variable now we will see a array so now we have a last action is available append to array so again because we not initialize any variable where type is as a array so that's the reason that variable list is not coming so now again what we need to do first i will delete this because otherwise uh, flow give me a error and i will change this to a array okay and now you can see that is coming now i will use the two and if i run this <coughs> okay okay so we need to define an array okay so that's how we uh, define an array okay so now i append this to a two so now in the compose you will able to see that value one two okay so that's how we use the append to array variable 
okay so today we cover all the variable uh, actions available in the cloud flows okay so first what we need to do again first we need to initialize the variable then only we can use the remaining actions available for variable let's say set increment decrement append to string append to array variable okay thanks for watching please subscribe my channel see you later everyone welcome back to my youtube channel today i am going to explain you about the how we can fetch the running workflow details okay so that we can send this detail in the email notification to the support team or to the specific uh, team where they can uh, see the workflow detail and if our workflow is failed then we can send the uh, 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 url failed uh, failed url of that running workflow okay so how we can do this so so i just added this compose action okay and if i click on the expression and if i scroll down then you can see we have a multiple function is available a string collection date time logical conversation math okay and then if i uh, select this workflow if i hover then you can see uh, this function provide you detail for the workflow itself at a runtime okay if i click on this if i click on okay and then if i going to run this then uh, you will see each detail of this workflow like uh, environment and uh, run flow id so each detail you guys uh, will be able to see okay so that flow is done successfully and uh, if i expand this and uh, let me copy this and paste it in a notepad so so you can see this is the id this is the type this is the location okay like basically region and then you can see the uh, inside the tags you can see the workflow display name which is our uh, flow name okay so you can see this is our flow name fetch workflow details okay and then in the same way we have a logic app name in environment created time last modified time created by trigger type okay so each detail we can see and about this run section so this run section will give us the information about the uh, current instant of the run workflow or failed workflow okay so if i go back and uh, if i show you guys the so you can see here we can see the uh, run history of this uh, current workflow if i click on this okay and copy that url and paste it in a notepad okay and now again what i will do i will do so this is you can see 349 time is if i select this this one now okay and if i copy this and paste it here then you can see each details each detail is same make dot power automate environment default and this detail is coming from here okay environment name so this is basically environment name and then we have a logic app name this is a basically nothing just our logic app name so you can see this is our logic app name this will remain same and now this part run okay so if you notice this part is getting changed okay so this number is ending with 0 1 and uh, if we have a another instance for another uh, failed instance we have a number ending with the 1 3 okay so if you guys let's suppose uh, uh, so this scenario comes in the picture when our cloud flow is running each and every let's say after one minute or two minutes okay and uh, if your flow get failed and your flow is getting failed on multiple iteration and uh, so that time what will happen you guys will go to uh, the run history and you guys will see okay what time that flow got failed and on the basis of the time you guys will open the run history so it is a very time consuming process so that time i uh, what you need to do 
okay you can simply uh, create that url because when you will open that run history okay so it is on the basis of the specific url okay which i just mentioned in the notepad okay so if i copy this url and if i open that url in the the tab then you can see it will open a running history of that workflow okay and in the same way if i open that url open in the new tab it will give you a different instance and okay so you can see this is a 340 instance of the power auto volume and this is the 349 okay so each and every time that number is getting changed each and everything will remain will be same so how we can uh, how we can fetch this okay so again what you need to do you need to uh, write a compose okay and uh, and uh, inside this i will copy this url till learn you can make this dynamic as well okay by using the uh, environment name logic name everything okay but i'm just giving you heads of how you guys guys can create okay and now you need to write a workflow and uh, what i need i need this name okay and name is coming under the run so what you guys need to do you guys need to dot then run then name and then click okay, okay. and if i run this so it will give me the running current running instance of this workflow means run history okay So flow run successfully and this is the url if i copy this url okay and paste it here it will give me the same run history so you can see this is the flow so this is the url okay so on a in that way you can uh, let's suppose if your flow get failed so that time you can call this compose and then send an email notification to the support team please check this and history flow get failed and uh, you can pass your whatever uh, transaction id item id iteration id invoice id okay so these details you can also send in the email notifications okay through this you can save your time okay thanks for watching please subscribe my channel see you later